Ready? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck to you as well. So this is a Gargoyles quest race between myself, Tina Hax, and Roguelink. Uh, Gargoyles quest is a platformer on the original Game Boy, one of the early original Game Boy games. That has a limited hover mechanic, which is going to be seen quite a bit throughout the run. Ideally, what we do is there's actually a technique called fluttering where you actually want to uh, not mash, but time how quickly you fall and when you're fluttering or when you're hovering and when you're not fluttering. When you're hovering and when you're not hovering, which allows you to get some extra distance. I uh, hear we're dropping down, killing as many enemies, enemies as possible to reduce our lag. Yep. So I normally go for the task right here, which I just missed, um, which means that you're going to see Rogue Link probably right now take a damage boost that I can't take. Overall, I save about a second in that one spot if I manage to get that strat. Getting this last little bit of health, we want to make sure we're at full health before this boss. Uh, bosses are pretty straightforward in this game. It's mostly positioning and mashing. There we go. You know, I just positioned my foot as if I was going to split, and that would have gone over really well, I think. Yeah, I tapped I tapped my foot right next to my pedal. <laughs> Alright, well now is as good a time as any to talk about RNG. So, in this game there are uh, encounters that you can get with various types of enemies. A lot of which are going to be pretty familiar to anybody who's played the Ghosts and Goblins series. This is a spin-off. And uh, that's the, the major source of variance in terms of time for otherwise pretty similar runs in terms of execution. So a really good run tends to have somewhere between five and seven random encounters. Uh, the worst that I've ever gotten is 15-ish. I think I've had at least one with 20. It was it was bad. <laughs> but that almost never happens. Uh, World Record has seven runs. Yeah. But also does some tricks that we won't be doing here because they're not marathon safe. Yeah. Um, among them is taking intentional deaths in the, in the random encounters. It's substantially faster to die than it is to actually finish an encounter. Uh, to the point where even taking the final shot to win an encounter is slower than immediately taking a death uh, instead of finishing the encounter. Right. The victory fanfare by itself takes about five to ten seconds, uh, depending on a few things. So even if you die right at the end, you're still going to save time because you don't see that fanfare and you don't get the item collection screen right afterwards. So that's one of the worst encounters that you can possibly get this early in the game. Um, you're going to notice that both Rogue Link and myself take a lot of damage boosts in this run. Um, and for example, that damage boost allowed me to kill those first two shield dudes as quickly as can be done. Getting through some more forced encounters here. And we're heading off to the second level. That is a split. Wait, re oh, shoot. <laughs> Did you just kill your timer? I just killed my timer, but that's fine. Do you want to restart? No, we're good. All right. So this is the monster tower. Uh, it's probably one of the more difficult runs in the whole game. Uh, quite a few runners of this game agree. There's a lot of really tight jumps and very awkwardly placed enemies. Uh, 
Oh, this actually isn't going too well right now. There we go. A little bit of back and forth there, unfortunately, but at least we didn't take any damage. Uh, right here, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to have a very particular position which will lock that top platform into place. And it's going to cause... Uh, it's going to allow us to get up there really quickly. Yeah, so I don't go for that strat. Um, if you miss that, you take damage, and that really messes up the the boss. Uh, yes, yeah, so you, you have to get to the boss with full health, which is one of the reasons why this level is so difficult. You only have two life, and you need at least one extra health in order to damage boost and have an optimal, optimal kill on this boss right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one early shot for the lower right eye, mash through. Here's where the damage comes into play. We're going to hit this spike right here, mash through this, the second eye, get one free shot, get the third eye, drop down, just barely avoiding the shot, and there you go. That's four eyes. All right, timer's fixed. Oh, nice. <laughs> there we go. So now one of the actually interesting differences, this is one of the few differences between English and Japanese. Uh, here, we're actually going to need to set up for a death warp, which we fortunately got an encounter here. I'm going to need to die a couple times. Usually I would have taken a death on a random encounter before Monster Tower, but for marathon safety, we're not going to do that. And after leaving Monster Tower, not only do we get the plot item, which is the gremlin stick. But we also get an extra life. And funny enough, that life doesn't exist in the English version. It's only in Japanese for some reason. Yeah, I did a little bit of experimentation to see if that made the uh, the English version potentially faster. And it doesn't. Uh, but, <laughs> but it does make it substantially closer. Uh, it turns out Japanese text still uh, in an optimal game is going to save about 20 seconds over the English version. Previously, it saved really close to a minute, so. Right, here we're using the gremlin stick on our good friend Jark. And since you maintain your progression between game overs in this game, we're going to be able to take a death as soon as possible. Ideally, we'll get an encounter right after we leave town, and that will send us back to the monster tower. Okay, unfortunately, we didn't get the random encounter, but we can still instantly die on uh, this fire right here. That's going to give us a game over, prevent us from revisiting the stage for a third time, and it's going to save us some overworld travel as well. And here we finally get an armor upgrade going from two health to three, which is actually a huge difference in this game. Any health you can get is pretty big, and there's only a handful of upgrades throughout the whole run. Yeah, so people who've played this game might uh, know that there is a secret item that allows you to refill your health on any stage. And uh, we're not going to get that because it's slow. But pretty much every other upgrade uh, will be collected in this run. Yeah, in, term in terms of upgrades, it's actually pretty difficult to skip them. Uh, in casual play, it's basically impossible. Uh, the world record, not very marathon safe strat, skips the first wing upgrade and does a trick called bridge skip, saving about 40 seconds. Uh, the TAS actually skips the first jump upgrade and the first wing upgrade uh, and saves a crazy amount of time. But skipping the first jump upgrade is currently uh, humanly possible, but it's very difficult to actually save time doing so. Yeah, I know that both Reglink and myself have managed to get through Monster Tower without jump, but it's, it's rough and it's not fast. There's also a few things that the task takes advantage of 
like some not consistent clips through platforms that just aren't possible RTA. There we go. One of the harder forced encounters coming up here. We're going to be jumping to the left and then mashing as fast as we can. There we go. And if you're quick enough, you can kill the ogre body before the head quite makes it to you. It's very tight timing, though. Yeah, I had uh, the, this is... the head not despawn. Ooh, rough. We're through, though. It's, uh, that's, that's what happens if you're just a few frames too slow. Oh, so. uh-oh. Nope, we're good. There we go. So there you see the, uh, the flutter mechanic that Rogue Link was talking about earlier. Yeah, there's some jumps that you can have some slightly more optimal movement with good flutters, but the bridge skip trick requires essentially 16 frame perfect flutters and is incredibly difficult. All right, so we're coming up on the dungeon called King's Palace. So the first half of it's pretty straightforward. Just don't get hit by a bunch of enemies. You're going to notice a bunch of blocks that look like they're very slightly out of place. Uh, those are all traps. If we touch them, we're going to most likely take damage. And then during the second half of the uh, the level, we're going to have a wind mechanic that we have to contend with. Funny little bit of trivia, if you're using the Game Boy Player with the GameCube, uh, those traps are actually bright red. So I'm coming up on, I think, probably one of the, the trickier jumps in this. Um, there's going to be a giant gargoyle that charges at me. We have a very narrow window to dodge. Just like that. So now he's going to chase me. Oof. This is bad. There we go. I'm going to take a hit here. Nope, got lucky. So that's what happens when, uh, when you flutter incorrectly. And on my side, we just got through the boss. Uh, again, it's another boss that you just want to position and mash down. Uh, if you don't mash him fast enough, you'll lose about four seconds because he'll split into four pieces. Here we're talking to the king, getting another full suite of upgrades. Everything but health. Nothing really to do in these towns here, so we're just going to enter them, leave them immediately. Pretty unfortunate getting an encounter on this particular seg segment. Uh, it's fairly small, so getting even one or two encounters is uh, fairly unlucky. And we're on two right now, unfortunately. Uh, there's also this desert coming up. It's kind of hard to tell unless you're playing, but it will actually be pushing you around. So there's a very specific route that we actually need to take in order to get to the next level optimally. The moment that you said it's unfortunate to get an encounter, I got an encounter. <laughs> I got three through the desert, so... That's well, two rough. or three. I think it was three. I just got my second one. So this is the desert, desert Pit. Uh, it's definitely my favorite level of this game. The yeah, entire is thing is managing your stanima, stanima and having very, very close encounters with all of these spikes. This is another stage where we're going to need to be at full health for the end, but unlike Monster Tower, there's at least one spot where you can restore your health without dying. So 
So now's a good time to talk about the snail. Um, easiest, easily the hardest boss in this game. Uh, the frame window that we have for mashing this boss down is super narrow. And ideally, he jumps right away, and you just need to stay facing right. And if you mash him fast enough, you'll survive. If you don't mash him fast enough, you'll die. <laughs> Simple as that. I assume that you just finished? Yep. Cool. And we're rewarded with the claw, another plot item. So... We're rewarded with the claw, which is an attack, as well as a plot item, which is the dark candle. The claw is pretty useful. It does extra damage. And we can also have two of them on screen at once. It also has the nice little feature of being able to cover up spikes on walls so that you can climb up otherwise unclimbable surfaces. Two encounters on our way back to town, so that's fairly unfortunate here. Yep, I just got one, but I'm going to take an ID. Okay. But this is the point in the game where encounters don't take as much time. Uh, we're able to kill them almost instantly, but as, you're, as you can tell, almost all of our time loss at this point on is to the victory fanfare. Getting another armor upgrade from this little gargoyle right here. That's going to bump us up to four. Yeah, in the English translation, it's no more clear than in the Japanese translation to me. Um, but for some reason, we've decided to beat up the little guy. And then we took his armor. So we're the good guys in this story, I guess. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think he challenges you. Because he's a punk or something like that. Here we go. Another forced encounter. Uh, this is the same encounter that we had earlier, just before the bridge. But you can tell that we're a lot more powerful now. So this goes way smoother than our previous fight. Which I'm going to, unfortunately... Uh, die on because I missed a uh, damage boost on some spikes. So my route for this kill was a little off. There we go. Dying on a forced encounter is actually very unfortunate because unlike dying on a random encounter, the forced encounter is still there. So there's no getting around it. So we're both, at this point, going to be coming up on a character called Majora, whose entire purpose in this game is to dump the entire plot at us. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> so right now we're being told, hey, you know the, the fabled protagonist of this story? Well, it turns out you're him. Um, so maybe it's time for you to go and, I don't know, save the world or something like that. As a kid, I actually really enjoyed how the plot was handled in this game because uh, several characters and several NPCs talk about the Red Blaze and the Red Blaze kind of just goes from this event to this creature to a gargoyle and eventually you find out that you are in fact this, you know, force to be reckoned with known as the Red Blaze. So here, I'm going to game over, but I'm going to take a death intentionally because I'm actually going to respawn right here. 
so I don't really save any, uh, lose any time. Plus, it gives me an extra life, even though I game over, that I can use on a random encounter later. Fairly straightforward level here. Now, to save a little bit of time, we're actually going to damage boost on this fire. And work our way through. Last split of RNG, or last little segment of RNG here. Once we get through to the cave that we're trying to get to, it's all on us. No more RNG. Unfortunately, I'm getting quite a few encounters here. Yeah, that's rough. Right at the end. But we made it through. All right, so we are both going to go talk to Rushafell, who is convinced that, that he's the Red Blaze. So we're going to have a, a polite chat with him, which will result in us dueling over who's the real Red Blaze. All right, so we're both coming up on uh, one of the most important damage boosts of the entire game. Uh, we have these weird spikes that move back and forth that will be coming up on my screen pretty quick. And uh, we're going to damage boost off of the spikes that aren't moving, which do one damage, and go hopefully through all of the moving spikes, which all do two. Just like that. jump there to reset the uh, the spawn of one of those moving spike balls. So we're coming up on the fight against Rushafell. So the strat here is to take a D-boost, stand on his head, and mash like crazy. I was almost too low. Oh gosh, did you get it? <laughs> that was yeah, I got it, but that was spooky. <laughs> All right, so Rogue Link and I have a, a tradition whenever we race. We're coming up on a bridge where we can go under the level. So each of us are going to try once to go under the level. Yeah, it's very important after getting our full power upgrade from Rushafell. We actually have infinite wing strength, which makes this trick possible. Yep. Uh, all we need to do is get to the right side of the screen. All right. Well, there's my game over. And let's go ahead and do this the, uh, the intended route. I think we're screen for screen now. Well, I just, I game overed, so. Oh, first try. So that trick saves about two seconds overall, just from... The amount of jumping and moving around that I have to do. Plus, it mitigates a tiny amount of lag from enemies that show up on screen very briefly. Alright, so we're both coming up on the final dungeon now. Which has, without a doubt, the best music in the game. Oh, easily.
and the damage boost route through this level is very, very particular. We're going to try to have as few menus as possible since they lose a lot of time. If all goes well, this should be my last menu for this entire level. I had a little trouble positioning there, but it's fine. So you can see these jumps are very, very tight. Lots of uh, barely missing uh, lava, and all the lava does two damage. And uh, here on my screen, we're coming up on the most important trick of the game. Pressing B. Very difficult. You have to mash B. Uh, King Breger will essentially ask whether or not you should join him. And if you say yes, you will literally be as powerful as you are in the first level of the game. And you'll just die. But we say no. Uh-oh. Yep, that's bad. So I accidentally took uh, some extra damage, so I couldn't bash him down fast enough, and then I said A. So this is horrendous, Ooh. but now you can see what happens when you hit A and what you shouldn't do. Yeah, that's no good. So on my on my side, uh, time is going to happen when I close the final text box. I'm going to leave the timer running uh, so that we know what Rogue Link's time was as well. Here we go. So yeah, unfortunate uh, series of mistakes there at the end. Uh, lost about 45 seconds there, dying to the end. 2740, which is 50 seconds off of PB for me. Switch into the ultimate shot. Uh, you can actually kill this boss with uh, Brick Break and not menu at all. Yep. But we're going to switch over here, go for the intended strat. Uh, since we died and uh, had to menu anyway to switch to an attack that could damage him. Yeah, so Brick Break, uh, what you saw on my side was... Uh, it's It saves about three or four seconds uh, when you factor in the amount of time that you spend menuing. But uh, but the dark fire shot is definitely faster. It does double damage per shot. And that is time. So 28.33. Still within a minute. Still not bad at all. Yeah, very good. I, we were very, very close there, with the exception of my uh, horrendous uh, choke right there at the end. Yeah, that was super close. Um, yeah, that was that a... boss is usually pretty consistent, but uh, unfortunately, I just shifted to the right a little early, and I was punished for it. Uh, what was your time again? Uh, my time was twenty-seven forty. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, very good race. Yeah, that's a that's a really good no reset time. Especially since I, I only took one intentional death. So, yeah. That if, if I had taken one more intentional death and I had not missed the uh, first try under level, that could have been real close to my PB. Yeah, when you said, uh, when you, said you got the game over, I had just finished talking to Rushafell. Okay. So I knew we were really, oh, really yeah, close. Oh, yeah, we would have been screen for screen for sure then, like you said. Yeah. All right, I, I am going to... Close. Yeah, I'm going to kill this recording. <laughs>